Hello, good evening. Okay, we are going to wait um, for the others because remember that we have a practice um, of a conversation and we are going to talk about uh, the celebration of the Valentine's Day and we are going to have that practice and remember that I was saying yesterday that we are going to have that practice. Así que vamos a esperar un momento a que entren todos los demás a la reunión por la mayoría para que podamos hacer nuestra práctica de la conversación sobre la celebración del día de San Valentín. And we are going to read again that conversation and then you are going to practice pronouncing the words. Um, but uh, we are going to do something first. Remember that we are on the last day of this first week Imagine that we are like running on time because uh, this is the end of the first week. And we are not like, oh, we didn't feel that time. Ya terminamos la primera semana. Hoy se termina la primera semana. El tiempo va bastante rápido. Y ustedes tienen que haber terminado la sección 1 y 2 de la plataforma para este día. Acuérdense que ustedes tienen que ir eh, trabajando en la plataforma. En este caso, no es necesario que ustedes solo trabajen sección 1 y sección 2. Si ustedes se quieren adelantar con sus secciones, no hay ningún problema. You can do it. But you need to have completed the section 1 and section 2 for today because um, they are evaluating you about the progress on the platform. So... If you have problems, if you have troubles with some exercises, you can ask for help. Si alguno de ustedes tiene algún problema con la plataforma o con alguno de los ejercicios, puede pedir ayuda y se les van a ayudar. Si usted tiene un problema y usted lo tiene ahorita, que dice, ah, yo no pude pasar en ese ejercicio, usted me puede decir en ese momento y lo podemos resolver. No hay ningún problema con eso. If not, that's very good. So, we are going to start with the conversation. And tell me, Diana. Buenas noches. Good evening. Eh, fíjese que yo estaba haciendo los ejercicios, pero hay, hay unas que no, cuando yo le doy este, la respuesta, no me las acepta. Eh, voy a mandarle la, la captura ahí al chat. Ok. Si puede mandarlo al grupo de WhatsApp. O sea, usted mande la captura al grupo de WhatsApp y yo la voy a contactar en privado para ayudarle con el ejercicio. Eh, si me ayuda a agregarme al grupo de WhatsApp porque no estoy. No le llegó en el correo que les mandaron. El enlace. No. Ok, let me Pero see if I can send the link here. Okay, so give me a second because I'm, I'm going to see if I can send to you the, the link of the group. Give me a moment to add. In that case, you can add yourself. Vamos a ver si lo podemos enviar para que se pueda agregar al grupo y así usted reporte sus problemas ahí y no sea mucho más fácil ayudarle. Así que un bueno. momento que está cargando WhatsApp. P3. We need P3 here. This is the group. Let me see if I can get. Oh, here we have the link. Do you have the link there? I mean, let me see. Mm, 
Yes, you have the information on the platform, but I, I'm going to do it here. And I think I cannot do it because I am not the administration of the group. Uh -um. No. So in this case, I don't have the um, the option to share that uh, link with you right now. But if you can give me your uh, number, I will add the information or um, send message messengers to you. Así que si puede darme su número en el chat, la voy a agregar para poder ayudarle con ese problema y también para mandarle el enlace. Ok. There is a link. You have a link there. Can you try to enter the link, please? Ok. Para ver si puede entrar al enlace que le, que le mandó Gabriela. Ahorita vamos a ver. Ay, oh, sí, ya estoy. Ah, okay, okay, that's good. Gracias. Sí, gracias. Thank you, Gabriela. Okay. Now we have resolved that problem. We are going to begin with the session. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, this is the conversation that we are going to practice right now. We are going to read again the conversation and then I'm going to create the breakup rooms in which you are going to practice your pronunciation. So we are going to do it slowly, that's okay. So Tyler, are you going to do anything special for Valentine's Day? So, Tyler, are you going to do anything special for Valentine's Day? Yeah, I'm going to take my girlfriend out for dinner. Yeah, I'm going to take my girlfriend out for dinner. Oh, really? Where are you going to go? Oh, really? Where are you going to go? Lagunas, it's her favorite restaurant. Lagunas, it's her favorite restaurant. Oh, she's going to like that. Oh, she's going to like that. How about you? What are you going to do? How about you? What are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to go to a restaurant. Well, I'm not going to go to a restaurant. But I am going to go to a dance. But I am going to go to a dance. Sound like fun. Sounds like fun. Well, have a good Valentine's Day. Well, have a good Valentine's Day. Thanks you too. So now we are going to make the breakup rooms in which you are going to practice your conversation. So I'm going to do like a small, yes, a small, a small groups because we are not going to have a lot of people there. So, un mensaje le va a aparecer a ustedes en su pantalla. Tienen que accesar ahí para poder entrar a lo que son los breakup rooms.
Ok, Ariel, Gabriela, Ariel, Carla y Merlin, I need you to access to the breakup rooms to make the practice. Vaya. ¿Qué dijo que íbamos a hacer? Van a leer la conversación. Ah, ok. ¿Y cómo vamos a hacer ahora entonces? ¿Vamos a ir en parejas de dos o cómo? No entendí. Sí, en este caso ustedes son cuatro. Ustedes pueden eh, escoger quién va a ser Mona y Tyler y leer la conversación y luego la otra pareja también va a leer la conversación para ir practicando la pronunciación. Ok, perfecto. Bueno, eh, Aida tal vez usted la puede hacer conmigo y Claudia con José. Sí, me parece. Okay, entonces empieza ¿Con? Aida. ¿Con quién me...? Conmigo. ¿Con? Conmigo. Sí, ok, ok. Sí. Ese de Have a Good Valentine, ¿verdad? Sí. Yes. Ok, yo soy Mona. Yo soy Taylor. Ok, perfecto. So, Taylor, are you going to do anything special for Valentine Days? Yeah, I'm going to take my girlfriend out for dinner. Oh, really? There, are you going to go? Laguna is her favorite restaurant. Oh, she is going to like that? How about you? What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Vamos. So Tyler, are you going to do anything special for Valentine's Day? Yeah, I'm going to take my girlfriend out for dinner. Oh, really? Where are you going to go? Lagunas. It's her favorite restaurant. Oh, she's going to like that. How about you? What are you going to, to do? Well, I am not going to go to a restaurant, but I am going to going to go to a dance. Sounds like fun. What are you? What are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to go to a restaurant, but I am going to go to a dance. Sound like fun. We'll have a good Valentine's Day. Thanks you too. 
Ok. ¿Y cómo mm. nos podemos dividir? Bárbara, si quiere, él y yo. Yo otra vez. empiezo. So, Tyler, are you gonna do anything special for Valentine's Day? Yeah, I go to take my super out for dinner. Oh, really? Where are you gonna go? Laguna, here for Burgi restaurant. Oh, she's gone like that. How? So, sounds like some like on the wheel. How a good Valentine. Valentine's Day. O Valentine's Day. <ríe> ahora sí. cambiado. Va, va, ahora usted es Mona y yo Tyler. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Vaya, yes. ya. So, so, Tyler, are you going to the anything special? Uh, special, Eva, o especial. Es special, special. Special for Valentine's Valentine, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Va Valentine's Day. Day. Valentine's Day. Day. Valentine's Day. Good. Yeah, I am going to take my girlfriend out for dinner. Oh, really? Where are you going to go? Lagoons this her favorite Oh, she going to like hat that that Who about you what are you going to do Laguna is her favorite restaurant. Oh, she going to like that? How about you? What are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to go to a restaurant, but I am going to go to a dance. Sound like well, have a good Valentine's Day. Thanks. You too. Bye. En el 66% de la segunda. Ah, pues le falta todavía un poquito. Sí, lo tengo que terminar porque hoy me escribieron de inglés corporativo. Hoy, hoy, hoy se tienen que entregar eso. Creo porque yo. no he hecho nada. No, yo sí, gracias a Dios, no, no mañana lo termine. No, yo definitivamente me he sentido muy mal, no he trabajado, no he hecho absolutamente nada. Sí, algo pasa, a veces uno está cansado. Bueno, y vamos a practicar esa conversación. O la que usted tiene, Luisa. Es la misma. Ah, la misma. La misma. Sí. Ah, o sea, ah, ella ah. la pegó ahí en, en la, en la, lo que nos, en las clases que ya todo el día. Ah, en el uh -huh. archivo ese que se actualiza. Sí, ahí está. Ah, así es mejor, va. Así no copia uno nada. Sí, estaba porque <risa> si, si le pone no. más atención uno a ella, debe de estar escribiendo algo, ahí sale todo lo que ella no Sí. Tiene. Sí, pero este fin de semana. 
Okay, we were practicing the conversation and we have the breakout rooms, but now we are going to come back to the main session. Vamos a volver a la sesión eh, principal después de hacer la práctica. So we are going to wait for um, 38 seconds to the others to come back to the main session. Okay, we are back to the main session. We are here again, and I'm going to tell you something. It, it was really amazing to hear you practicing that conversation because you were like um, reading the conversation and saying the words. So that was a very, very good um, practice. But I need to know, how do you feel or how did you feel with that exercise? ¿Cómo se sintieron con el ejercicio? Good. Good. Yo creo que ya nos sentimos familiarizados. Si hemos llegado hasta este, perdón, soy, soy, agarré la palabra. No, that's okay. Yo creo que ya... Para el módulo 3 creo que la mayoría ya se siente identificado porque ya maneja un nivel un poco avanzado en el vocabulario. Yes, and that's good. Um, the good thing about this kind of practice is that you can feel better with your pronunciation. Because you know that in some cases we feel like ashamed about the pronunciation that we have about the words. But when we make this kind of conversation with, with um, our partners, we are going to feel more comfortable with the words that we are practicing. Así que estos ejercicios nos ayudan a nosotros a sentirnos más seguros, que esa es una de las cosas que más nos cuesta cuando estamos aprendiendo un nuevo idioma, sentirnos seguros de nuestra pronunciación. And as I was saying, that we are going to have different pronunciations because of the um, country in which we live. And that's okay. We are going to have that kind of pronunciation and you can improve that pronunciation over time. So that was uh, the conversation that we were practicing about Valentine's Day. And now we are going to continue with the new topic that we are going to develop. Remember that yesterday we were talking about celebrations and also we were seeing some words on um, some expressions that we can use with a celebration. And we were talking about a, a special things that we a, did or that we do in a, those celebration. For example, in Mother's Day, in birthdays, graduation, weddings, and all of that things. But now we are going to read an article um, that is called, what are you going to do on your birthday? ¿Qué vas a hacer para tu cumpleaños? And we are going to read four um, ideas from different people from different countries. And we are going to see what are the difference between those celebration and the celebration that we make eh, in our countries or in our houses. Vamos a ver las diferencias. En este caso solo es lectura y vamos a ver en qué eh, nos parecemos con personas de diferentes países a la hora de celebrar un cumpleaños y en qué somos muy diferentes. So, let's see the article in this one. You can find it on the platform. Este también está en la plataforma. So let's begin with Elena Buenaventura from Madrid. And she says, my 21st birthday is on Saturday and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go out with some friends to wish me a happy birthday. They are going to pull, they are going to pull 
on my ear 21 times, once for each year. It's an old custom. Some people pull on the ear just once, but my friends are very traditional. Imagine that you are living in Madrid and you are um, having your birthday and your friends are going to pull your ears uh, one time per year. Imagínense esa celebración. Se tiran de la oreja, en este caso ya está cumpliendo 21 años, le van a, a tirar de la oreja 21 veces, una vez por cada año que está cumpliendo. That's something very different from our uh, celebrations. But they are, like, like she said, they are very traditional and there is something very common to do. Then we have Yang Xin Shi from ta Taipei and it says, Tomorrow is my 16th birthday. It is a special birthday. So we are going to have a family ceremony. I'm probably going to get some money in lucky envelopes from my relatives. My mother is going to cook noodles. Noodles are for a long life. People in Asia have this kind of tradition in which they give money to the people that are uh, having their birthdays and also um, on New Year's Eve or on weddings. And they have these red um, envelopes in which they give a lot of money. And that is a very good uh, celebration to give money to someone. And they also eat noodles because that represents the people it's going to have a long life. Es como nosotros, que para nuestro cumpleaños pedimos una comida en especial, eh, sea lo que más nos guste, en este caso en Taipei, en, en Asia más que todo, se tiene esa costumbre de comer eh, fideos, porque representa una vida muy larga, y en otras partes de Asia son eh, sopa de algas y cosas así, que representa, ¿verdad?, como un nuevo año para la persona que cumple años. Then we have Mr. and Mrs. Aoki from Kyoto. My husband is going to be 16 tomorrow in Japan. The 16th birthday is called Kanreki. It is uh, the beginning of a new life. This is very pretty. It's the beginning of a new life. The color red represents a new life. So children often give something red as a present. What are our children going to give him? A red hat and vest. Imagínense qué bonito. Esa, esa, esa idea en Japón. Que los 60 es el comienzo de una nueva vida. And maybe many people think that uh, uh, being an old person is not something very good, but they feel like they are going to live another life, a new life that is better than the previous years that they have. That is, that is pretty, pretty interesting. And then we have Philip Jolly uh, from uh, Paris. I'm going to be 30 next week. So I'm going to invite three very good friends out to dinner in France. When you have a birthday, you often invite people out in some countries. I know it is opposite. People take you out. In this case, the person that is um, like having their birthday is going to take the friends out. But here in our country, people take, out, uh, take us out. In Francia, nosotros como cumpleaños tenemos que sacar a tres personas o a un grupo de personas a comer afuera, pero acá en el país nosotros, a nosotros nos tienen que sacar porque es nuestro día especial. We have very uh, different celebrations around the world, uh, referring to the birthday thing. Here in El Salvador is very common to go to a restaurant or to cook something delicious for the people that are having their birthdays, uh, we give some gifts. Um, maybe we have music and all of that things, but in this case, we can see they have different traditions. Um, they are 
some of them are kind of uh, funny and other are very, very um, like pretty celebrations. But at the end, we make something interesting in this situation. Así que tenemos ahí diferentes celebraciones. This, um, this article is going to help you with the exercise because you are going to read each uh, part of the article and you are going to answer some um, questions. Así que ya lo leímos, ya le pusimos atención y ya ustedes sabrán cuál es la respuesta correcta para ese ejercicio que está en la plataforma que tiene que ver con estas celebraciones de cumpleaños. So, this is very short and we are going to continue with the second part or the second topic that also is very uh, simple for you. Let me see. You cannot see the images. Give me a second. I'm going to stop this one. And I'm going to share again the screen. Maybe you can see again the images. If not, can you tell me if you see the images? Now, can you see the photos? ¿Puede ver ahora la pantalla? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So now, this is a very easy topic. Parts of the body. We're going to make a review, just a review of the uh, parts of the body. And we have this image that you can find on the platform also in a video in which we are going to listen the pronunciation of the different parts of the body. I know that you know this uh, vocabulary, but it is necessary that we hear different pronunciations of uh, these parts and to remember that vocabulary. Este es solo un recordatorio de el vocabulario. Nosotros ya lo conocemos, pero vamos a seguirlo practicando. So we are going to go to the platform and we are going to listen the pronunciation. So give me a moment. Is charging. Here we are. Number two. Okay. Parts of the body. We are going to pay attention to the pronunciation. And let's go. Foot. Hi everyone. In this class you'll learn vocabulary for discussing different parts of the body. Let's get started by listening and practicing. Parts of the body. Head. Eye. Head. Ear. Nose. Nose. Mouth. Tooth, teeth, chin, back, shoulder, chest, stomach, throat, neck, wrist, arm, Elbow, thumb, hand, finger, fingers, leg, knee, ankle, foot, feet, toe. Toes. Make sure that you memorize this vocabulary.
Now we are going to listen at the vocabulary, but a little bit faster. We are going to change the um, the way we hear the vocabulary. Vamos a cambiar un poco la velocidad. Lo vamos a poner un poco más rápido para escucharlo. So we are going to listen again the vocabulary. different parts of the body. Let's get started by listening and practicing. Parts of the body. Head. Eye. Ear. Nose. Mouth. Tooth. Teeth. Chin. Back. Shoulder. Chest. Stomach. Throat, neck, wrist, arm, elbow, thumb, hand, finger, fingers, leg, knee, ankle, foot, feet, toe, Toes. Make sure that you memorize this vocabulary. An easy way to do this is by pointing to your head and expressing, this is my head. Then pointing to your arm and saying, this is my arm. Remember, the goal is to learn this vocabulary. So do this until you have learned all the vocabulary words. Okay, here the point is that you learn that vocabulary. And sometimes we um, learn some words, but in some uh, moments or different moments, when someone asks us about the vocabulary, we forget the name of the word. Or even we forget the way in English to express that name. And that is something that we are going to leave because it is very, very common to have those problems. And also it's going to be like funny because you are going to forget the word in Spanish sometimes because you are listening that vocabulary and you are going to say, oh, I remember the English word but I don't know how to say it in Spanish. And it's kind of funny because we, we say, my first language is Spanish, but why I am forgetting words in Spanish. Y es bastante divertido cuando nos pasa que se nos olvida una palabra en español, sabiendo que nosotros somos nativos, eh, que hablamos español. Pero suele suceder cuando nos estamos acostumbrando a un nuevo idioma. So in this case, one of the most important part of the learning process um, of a new language is to gain vocabulary. The first thing that we need to focus us on vocabulary. If we have vocabulary, we can talk, we can express ideas. First vocabulary, then pronunciation, then grammar. Because in that case, we are going to have a lot of words that we can use to create conversations. Then we are going to uh, learn how to pronounce those words. And then we are going to construct different uh, sentences using that vocabulary. Así que lo primero es enfocarnos en el vocabulario ganar más eh, palabras a nuestro vocabulario para luego construir, para hacer nuestras oraciones, para poder comunicarnos con los demás y luego vamos viendo las estructuras, aprendiéndonos las estructuras, la gramática and all of the things. So, Let's continue. Let's see what is the other part, because in this case, this vocabulary is kind of uh, easy. So, 
So let's see. Just give me a second. Okay. The other topic that we have here is a conversation. It's called, I feel homesick. Homesick. What do you think is homesick? Okay. Yes, but what is the, the, the meaning of homesick? ¿Qué enfermedad será esa? Homesick. 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 What do you think? ¿En las manos? No. Mm, no. No, okay. Estoy enfriado. No. Mm, I'm going to give you a clue. It's not something physical. No, calentura. Mm, no. <laughs> we have the word home and we have the word sick. Home, sick. ¿De casa? Tiene que ver con casa. Okay. Incapacidad por enfermedad. Es enfermedad. Mm, no es una enfermedad. Enfermedades caseras. Mm. Sí, sería una. No. Mm, no. It's not uh, something about uh, sickness. Home sick. When we are far away from our home for like a week, how can we feel? What is the feeling that we, we have in that moment? Alérgico. No, cuando estamos lejos de nuestra casa, por mucho tiempo, ¿cómo nos sentimos? Ah, nostálgico. nostálgico. Good. Nostalgia. Homesick. Es un sentimiento. Es un sentimiento. Es un feeling. Yes, it's a feeling. Pero, Pero se llama. ¿Cómo se escribe? Homesick. Es home de casa. H-O-M-E-S-I-C-K. Homesick. Home. Unido. De, sí, unido. Home de casa. Sick de enfermo. But we are going okay. to see what is this part because we are talking about I feel homesick, but what is the the thing with this um with this part? So let's see a short video in which they are explaining the use of have plus noun and feel plus adjective. And also we are going to listen a conversation in which they are talking about feeling homesick or feel homesick. So let's pay attention to the explanation and also to the conversation. And I'm going to take the 075. Okay, let's see. Jerk plus feet. This one. Hi, everyone. In this class, you learn how to express different illnesses. For example, I have a headache. I don't feel well. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, I feel homesick. I feel homesick. Hey, Kenichi, how are you? Oh, I'm not so good, actually. Why? What's the matter? Well, I have a headache. 
and a backache. Maybe you have the flu. No, I think I just feel a little homesick for Japan. That's too bad. But maybe I can help. Let's have lunch at that new Japanese restaurant. That's a great idea. Thanks, Brian. I feel better already. Now let's take a look at the examples on this chart. Have plus noun. Feel plus adjective. Matter. How are you? I feel. I feel. I feel. Sick. Awful. Terrible. Miserable. Positives. Fine. Great. Fantastic. How to form states with have plus noun. We can follow this formula to do that. Subject plus have plus noun. Let's analyze the first example. I have a headache. The subject is I. Then we need to put have. Finally, we include a noun, a headache. Let's take a look at one more example. I have the flu. The subject is I. Then we need to put have. Finally, we include the noun, the flu. Now, I would like to show you how to form statements with feel plus adjective. We can follow this formula. Subject plus feel plus adjective. Let's analyze the example. I feel homesick. The subject is I. Then we need to add feel. Finally, we need to put an adjective. Homesick. Or it can be any of these adjectives towards the right. I feel sick, awful, terrible, miserable, fine, great, terrific, fantastic. Now it's your turn to practice giving examples. Okay, in this case, we have this explanation about the use of have plus noun and feel plus adjective. If you can notice something, they are talking about positive and negative adjectives. In this case, it's not like we are going to have negative sentences uh, like using don't, none, uh, I mean not, uh, didn't, haven't, and all of the things. In this case, it's the connotation of the words. What are they expressing? In this case, you have there in the negative adjective, you have seek. That is a bad feeling because you are not a, uh, feeling well. Also, you have awful, that is something that it have a negative connotation, terrible and miserable. And then with the positive adjective, you have fine, great, terrific, and fantastic. Terrific is not like something bad. You don't have audio. Ah, you have problems with your audio. So in that case, we are uh, using uh, these structures that they are presenting on the video to talk about sickness or to express how we feel in a, in a moment. And we have in the chat one example, I feel happy. In that case, it's like a state. But when we have some problems, some physical problem, I have a headache, I have the flu, I have um, pain, I have like sore throat, I have something related to the state of our body. In this case, when we feel 
sick. And in the conversation, we're going to just analyze the conversation here, but I have the conversation in the document. So let me go here and we have, I mean, this one. No, that one new, this. We have the conversation between Brian and Kenichi. And Brian said, hey, Kenichi, how are you? Oh, I'm not so good, actually. Why? What's the matter? Well, I have a headache and a backache. Maybe you have the flu. No, I think I just feel a little homesick from Japan. That's too bad, but maybe I can help. Let's have lunch at that new Japanese restaurant. That's a great idea. Thanks, Brian. I feel better already. In that case, we can think why he is feeling that headache, for example. ¿Por qué él siente dolor de cabeza si él está nostálgico? In some cases, when we have these strong feelings about something, eh, we feel stress about that situation. And in this case, this person is having a and a strong feeling from its home. Y él está teniendo esos otros problemas de salud eh, por el sentimiento tan fuerte que tiene de la nostalgia. Está pensando en eh, su casa, en su país, en su familia y no se siente bien. Eh, los problemas que tenemos nosotros, que no son físicos, que vienen ¿verdad? de nuestra cabeza, eh, como el estrés, ansiedad, depresión, eh, la nostalgia en este caso, can make some eh, changes in our body and we can feel sick outside, not just inside. So in this case, he is having a headache and a backache eh, because he is uh, feeling nostalgic from his home. And eh, Brian, I have a very good idea to take Kenichi to a Japanese restaurant because in that case, he feel better uh, seeing uh, uh, people from Japan uh, eating some food from its hometown, for example, and all of that things. So that is the conversation and those are the uh, structures that we can use to talk about um, sickness and uh, things related to health. And now I just want to show you this part because we're going to end the, the session in a couple of minutes. But we were uh, supposed to talk about medicine or medication. And we are going to construct a vocabulary uh, using it, the name of common medicine. But we are going to do it on Monday because we have like just a couple of minutes. Como estamos hablando del tema de la salud, vamos a hacer un pequeño vocabulario. En este caso no vamos a hablar de todo el vocabulario que se utiliza en el área médica. En este caso solo van a hacer algunas eh, medicinas comunes. Y solo vamos a escribir una pequeña lista. I'm going to write some of the names that I have for you because we have like two minutes or three minutes. And I have the number one. And we're going to continue on Monday. We have muscle cream. Que es una crema muscular para relajar el músculo. Then we have cough drops. Do you know how to say cough drops in Spanish? ¿Cuál es el significado de cough drops in Spanish? I've seen. Tos. Es algo para la tos, pero ¿qué será? Tos, tos. Jarabe para la tos. Mm, no, vamos a ver el jarabe 
más adelante, pero este sí tiene que ver con la tos, pero no es árabe. Es otra presentación. Drops, píldoras. Parece la night. Parecen píldoras, pero son más, más dulces. Ah, ok. Ay, dulce. Sí, dulces para la tos. Exacto. Dulces para la tos o caramelos para la tos. Very good. Then we have aspirin. Esta es bastante fácil. En español es aspirin. aspirina. 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 Cold pills. Cold pills. Píldoras frescas. Píldoras para. Para la para gripe. Mm, resfriado. Bien, para el resfriado. Pastillas o píldoras para el resfriado. Good. And I have more words for you to create this vocabulary, but we are going to do it on Monday. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other the next week on Monday. So have a really good night and a great weekend. So see you on Monday. See you, take care. See you next week. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See you. See you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. See you Monday. Thanks for your time. Thanks you too.